people used to get rich because of oil and big industry. You had to employ thousands of people to be one of the select few that serviced the population in order for you to become wealthy. But now things have changed. The way the economy works has changed. Anyone can become rich if you know how. And you're about to find out. Here are 15 ways to get rich in the new economy. Welcome to Alux, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. First up, your voice and opinion is where the money is. What we're about to tell you will change the way you look at life forever. Remember this, okay? Information, even the truth, is a commodity. There's nothing new to be said. That doesn't mean there isn't a demand for valuable insights. It's just that we don't want to be sifting through everything ourselves. You know how there are so many bands that make love songs, but there's only one that's your favorite? That's how you win. Understanding this will make you rich. The value today is in your unique perspective on the topic. Everyone can say it, sure, but it hits different when it comes from you. Nobody can be better at you than you. That's what people like. It's the same reason you subscribe to our channel. When everyone and everything else becomes standardized, all the coffee shops look the same, all the podcasts are the same, all the food tastes the same, you need something specific. If you become specific, you'll be able to build an audience. And once you do, your fans will support you all the way to the bank. And you don't need many fans to make a living and not have to work, but you do need quite a few if you want to get rich. We live in the age of creators. You're either a consumer or a creator, okay? 1,000 true fans are enough for you to do it full time. 10,000 true fans are enough for you to live comfortably. 100,000 true fans are enough for you to become financially free. A true fan is someone who wants you to win, wants you to keep doing what you're doing, and is willing to pay for the value they receive. The economic value of an individual true fan is around $100 per year. But that's not all you're getting from them, no. They build communities around you and these communities grow and evolve because of them. True fans want to contribute to the creators because the creators contribute exponentially more to their lives. When we win, you win because we've been on this journey together since the beginning. You get rich by creating value for your community and in exchange, you receive a piece of that. Your reach determines how rich. Attention is the new oil. Attention allows you to put products in front of those eyeballs, which is why a Super Bowl commercial costs so damn much. If you want to be rich, you need to consider two things. One, how many people your message can reach. And two, what kind of quality your audience is, meaning how likely they are to buy from you and how rich those people are. Sauce companies like Adobe, Google, Salesforce, Slack, MailChimp, Notion are some of the most successful ones because they charge businesses a ton of money to use their product. You don't need a big reach, you need the right reach. If you're able to charge $3,000 a month, you only need 278 clients to be a million dollar a year business. The right audience is willing to pay, so find them. Give it away for free and then convert them when they can afford it. Gmail is free for you because they're charging businesses like ours $15 a month per user. Learn paid advertising so you don't need an organic reach. The greatest thing about the internet is you can buy attention. Here's how you get rich with online advertising. You have a product or service that you sell online and people are able to buy it from you with a credit card. You create an ad and pay platforms like Facebook, Google, Apple, TikTok to show it to the people on that platform. And this is where math becomes useful in real life. If you're able to spend $1 on ads in order to get $2 back, you win. In the early days, you're probably going to spend $10 to get $1 back in sales, and that's pretty depressing, okay? It's depressing as hell. But you toy around with it. Remember when we talked about the right audience? Well, the more relevant the ad is to people, the more likely they are to buy, so that improves your return. You create a couple more ads, and one of them performs much, much better than the rest. So that improves your return once again. 
You make your product better, you get better in the process, and now you know what you're doing. Being able to sell your product through different mediums is by far the most valuable skill of all that you should acquire in the modern economy. Invest in what you think will outlive you. In the new economy, trends come and go at a much faster speed than ever in history. The things that stick around will shoot up in value over time because of basic economic factors like increased demand, inflation, scarcity, higher consumer appetite, and the overall rise of the middle class. For wealth to grow to extraordinary levels, it requires time to compound as an ingredient. So ask yourself, will this be around 50 to 100 years from now? Will people still want it? If yes, buy it. Monetize it if you can and forget you had the money to buy it in the first place. Land, homes, raw materials, art, all stand the test of time. As expensive as things are today, no real asset will ever be cheaper than it is today if you're looking at it on a 50 to 100 year time horizon. Take, for example, there'll never be more Picasso paintings. There will never be more Rothko's, which is why rich people flock to it. Fine art changes hands so rarely, so whenever a big piece comes on the market, there's a feeding frenzy. You've seen the auction videos. The entire asset class is growing decade over decade. This is why the ultra-wealthy and over 60% of high-powered wealth managers have integrated art investing into their offerings. Firms like Deloitte project the market growing by 31% in the next two years alone. Research shows these kinds of portfolios outperform traditional ones 95% of the time. So if you're looking to get rich in the new economy, you need to learn to leverage the investment tools of our time. Instead of going to an auction and bidding millions of dollars on a painting, you go online and use a platform like Masterworks to invest. Masterworks has a team of art historians and financial analysts that have analyzed decades of auction data to acquire art with the strongest history of appreciation. So far, they've acquired over 300 paintings from legendary artists like Picasso, Monet, and Banksy. Their experts select and buy the paintings for millions of dollars and then break them up into shares like you would do with a traditional company. Investors buy these shares and once a painting is resold after a couple of years, the profit is split between the shareholders. Every painting Masterworks has sold to date has delivered a positive return to their investors. They've been pulling in net returns like 14.6%, 17.8%, 21.5% and even more. And that's why over 900,000 users have jumped on board. If you go to masterworks.art slash Alux right now, you can skip the waitlist and start investing in art today. Almost 1 million people invest in art through Masterworks. That's masterworks.com slash Alux, or simply click the link in the description. Great art has stood the test of time and it'll probably outlive all of us. Become an ambassador for a new technology. Every technology comes with its unique opportunities. The biggest three are, one, most people are not aware of it, two, most people don't know how to use it, and three, most people don't know how to make money with it. And that's where you come in. You either introduce the masses to how amazing it is, you teach people how they can use it themselves, or you monetize it before anyone else. All three of them are viable opportunities to build wealth. As the technology gains mainstream adoption, you'll be regarded as an expert, and experts get to charge expert rates for their input. And speaking of a market that's growing, there's a specific terminology used in the tech space. You become a barnacle on a whale. Your business is an add-on to another business that's growing exponentially, and because of its growth, you're growing as well. As the whale gets bigger, so do you. You piggyback on its growth. It's kind of what everyone tried to do around David Dobrik or Jake Paul, but let's keep this serious here, okay? As trends come along, some businesses establish themselves. Personal websites went up, that was the trend. WordPress became the whale. Having the number one WordPress theme or plugin recommended on their store was the barnacle. The whale brought you customers. You just had to hang on for the ride. Same with Shopify and their apps, and we're seeing it now with AI. 
ChatGPT is the whale and the barnacles are the featured GPTs. As the whale grows, more and more people will discover these add-ons, allowing these developers to grow substantial businesses. If the whale is a multi-billion dollar business, the barnacle can easily be worth in the tens of millions. You sell directly to consumers. Unlike in the past, where distribution played the most crucial role in the success of a business, now you just don't need the middlemen. Here's how it worked in the past. Let's say you were a chocolate maker. And no, okay, this has nothing to do with Jimmy's Feastables. So you're a chocolate maker, and it costs you $2 to make a bar of chocolate, including packaging and everything else. You would sell that chocolate bar to Walmart for $2.75. They would distribute it and sell it around the country for $5. This is how the old model worked for everything. Producers sold their profit for shelf space. Artists sold their souls to music labels. And with our chocolate example, the distributor ended up making more money than the creator of value, but not anymore, okay? Today, you can go directly to the consumer. This is how the youngest Kardashian made a billion dollars at 21 years old. If you have the product and are able to mass produce it, all you need is enough buyers and you'll figure out a way to get it to them cheaply. Remember number three and four on this list? Your reach determines how rich and you need to learn paid advertising? Well, that's where those come in. Instead of the distributor getting the bulk of your profit, you can sell the chocolate bar yourself for the same $5 plus shipping and instead of 70 cents, you can get the full $3 of profit. If you have the skill set to sell directly to consumers at scale, you're going to be five times richer than whoever needs the distributor to make it work. You can sell your knowledge. The new economy is one of curation, one of handpicking and guiding people through the maze of life. You'd think this makes it a race to the bottom where the cheapest knowledge wins, but that isn't reflected by reality. People don't want cheap. There are only two things better than cheap. The first one is fast. Walking is cheaper than taking an Uber, but the fact that Uber is worth over $160 billion kind of proves our point. The second one is a risk. There are plenty of cheap online universities, yet people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to Ivy League schools because it minimizes the financial risk of their careers. At least, it used to. So your knowledge isn't a race to the bottom. If through your knowledge, you're able to save people time or minimize the risk of overcoming an obstacle, people will pay for it, assuming that they know you exist. We made millions of dollars selling courses, and this year we're considering launching a flagship course on digital products, showing you exactly how we did it. You can join the waitlist by going to alux.com digital, and we'll give you a discount code when that's ready to open. Bitcoin. Be honest, okay, how many of you expected crypto to be on this list when you saw the title? Well, it's true, okay, we still have all of our Bitcoin untouched in cold storage because fundamentally the mission hasn't changed. We still believe this could be an insanely disruptive technology, especially if it achieves critical scale adoption. With BlackRock and Fidelity getting their Bitcoin ETFs approved, finally mainstream individuals will take Bitcoin specifically more seriously. The FTX collapse taught us a valuable lesson about the industry as a whole, so personally, we're done with alts. You guys can have all the X's you want, we'd rather play it smart this time. Bitcoin acts like the S&P 500 of the crypto world, and that's where we want to be if this works out the way some of the smartest people in the world think it will. And keeping up with our thesis of saving people time, even if right now you've got no idea how Bitcoin works, go to alux.com slash Bitcoin right now. In one and a half hours, you'll get up to speed with everything you need to know from understanding how it works to knowing how to buy it and store it safely. Use the promo code SUNDAY for $100 off at checkout. Use it to buy yourself $100 worth of Bitcoin just to see what that process is like. Sometimes you have to go against the grain to get those big wins. And speaking of going against the grain, you go aggressively counterculture. Every action is faced with an opposite reaction, and we've been seeing this in business and in fashion for decades. Think about it. Baggy jeans, skinny jeans, baggy jeans again. Pick any industry you want and there'll be a demand for both culture and counterculture. 
If you look at education, for example, most people would say the education system is going woke, even in the STEM disciplines. The move is to launch a private STEM school where children will only focus on math, physics, and programming. You know, the things you actually want them to learn without mentioning race, religion, or going into gender politics. Those will be addressed at home. At school, we learn math people would pay to protect their kids from all the nonsense going around these days. As of 2023, approximately 2 million children are out of the traditional education system. You hire talent on the other side of the world and sell it locally. It used to be that if you hired someone from the Philippines, India, from Eastern Europe or South America, you'd get mediocre quality work. That was 10 to 15 years ago, okay? Times have radically changed. Countries that are outsourcing talent are no longer dirt cheap and poor quality. The prices are still substantially lower since they went up locally, but the quality matches the quality of the West. Understanding how talent is priced differently around the world increases your profit margins. This is how all of these agency businesses operate. There's someone from the West selling you a package for $5,000, and then they outsource the work to someone else for $1,500, and they pocket the difference. But instead of doing just that kind of shady arbitrage, do something else, okay? Use that talent to build something extremely valuable for everyone. It now costs you a fraction of the cost it used to to build any sort of technological product. That idea you had for an app, for a product, some piece of software that you know you couldn't afford to pay a software engineer to develop in the past? Well, that might be in the realm of possibility for you now. And once you build it, the world is your marketplace. You sell it internationally. There are rich people everywhere, okay? This means there are people looking, needing, and able to pay for your product or service everywhere in the world. This is one of the greatest leverage plays in human history. If you made earrings in the past, you only sold them to the people who passed by your booth while you were displaying them. Well, now those earrings can be sold to literally billions of people online 24-7. Whatever it is you're doing, figure out a way to go international if you want to be rich in the new economy. You do it long enough to catch a break. Some people catch their break in year five or six, but that break changes everything for you forever. The greatest thing about the new economy is there are no longer any barriers to entry. The worst thing about the new economy, well, it's the exact same thing, okay? Everyone everywhere is taking a shot at it, making it harder to stand out. So you know how to stand out, eh, Luxor? You keep going while they're quitting left and right. Turns out people are super excited to start something, but just they don't stick with it long enough to see it flourish. They don't really want it in the first place. Take podcasting, for example. 90% of podcasts don't get past episode three. That's the 1.8 million people who quit. Of the 200,000 left, 90% will quit after 20 episodes. That's another 180,000 gone. To be in the top 1% of podcasts in the world, you only need to publish 21 episodes of your podcast. Your competition is not the 2 million other podcasts, it's the 20,000 podcasters who didn't quit. In order to win in the new economy, you just have to show up when nobody else does, and the win is yours. That's why we keep going after so many years. And finally, pay for access, pay for tools, pay for mentorship. You want to be someone's apprentice. You want to be in the room where the magic happens, for once you see how the magic is put together, you become a magician yourself. Pay for books, pay for coaching sessions, pay for seminars, pay for retreats, pay for private memberships. The only requirement is you commit to it. These save you time, they save you money, and if you're the kind of person who actually has what it takes to make it happen, it will work for you. You might not find all of the answers in the same place, but over the medium term, everything you learn starts to add up and come together. Your business can be 3 x by learning to use a new tool. There are two distinct things you should pay for in terms of know-how. One, the kind that builds your mind up as an asset. And two, the kind that shows you how to do something specifically. 
combine these two and you've got a gold mine, my friend. Gee, if only there was an app out there that did all of this. Mm-hmm. You'll get rich when you shut the world out and you do it anyway. A lot of people will doubt you, but if others did it, so can you. So which of these do you plan on using to make yourself rich in the new economy? Let us know in the comments. And since you're still here on a Sunday, sure, you've earned it, let's do a bonus. You have to carry the ones who need carrying until they can carry the thing themselves. A team is only as strong as its leadership. Some people are not born strong, but they become strong in the presence of strength. You need to show them what you're made of. This is a gold nugget right here, but pay attention, okay, because it requires some finesse. We learned this on our own the hard way. Then we learned that there's no other way to get around it. But don't take it from us, okay? Take it from the GOAT, from the one and only Michael Jordan. Here's his quote on this exact lesson, word for word. Michael Jordan on putting winning over feelings. I pulled people along when they didn't want to be pulled. I challenged people when they didn't want to be challenged. And I earned that right because my teammates who came after me didn't endure all the things that I endured. Once you joined the team, you lived at a certain standard that I played the game and I wasn't gonna take anything less. Now, if that meant I had to go in there and get in your ass a little bit, then I did that. You ask all my teammates, the one thing about Michael Jordan was he never asked me to do something that he didn't fucking do. When people see this, they're gonna say, well, he wasn't really a nice guy, he may have been a tyrant. Well, that's you, because you never won anything. I wanted to win, but I wanted them to win and be a part of that as well. Look, I don't have to do this. I'm only doing it because it's who I am. That's how I played the game. That was my mentality. If you don't want to play that way, don't play that way. Michael Jordan, ladies and gentlemen. Among you, there are a handful of select individuals who share this internal fire, this overwhelming passion and hunger. This bonus is for you, okay? Because we believe you're the ones who are gonna come out victorious in this new economy. If you're one of those few, write the letters MJ in the comments. Only we'll know why.